bit of what do I do? And, you know, am I missing out? You get FOMO and, and then people jump in without even knowing why they jumped in just because they got FOMO. They didn't do their research. Very dangerous. So, and, but you know, that's how people get wiped out. And you see people jump into the crypto market maybe because they feel FOMO, they haven't researched it, they didn't figure it out, and that's very dangerous. Crypto is not something that you should just jump into without at least getting some help from someone who's been down that road before, teaching you how to properly handle it, how to properly purchase it, how to properly store it, etc. So there are a lot of pitfalls out there right now, but there are also opportunities. In today's news recap, India's gold market update, festive buying holds ground in the face of high prices. Gold extended its record-breaking streak into October. Momentum softens post-U.S. elections. Gold continued its rally in October for the fourth consecutive month, hitting multiple fresh highs and closing the month with a gain of almost 5% at $2,779 per ounce. The price rise was driven by event risk and uncertainty surrounding the U.S. elections, along with escalating geopolitical tensions, which outweighed the higher opportunity cost for gold on account of a stronger U.S. dollar and higher bond yields. The rally in gold paused post the U.S. election as the dollar strengthened and Treasury yields rose. In fact, both international and domestic gold prices have fallen by 8% since the end of October. Despite this recent pullback, gold remains one of the best performing assets this year, with a YTD return of 17% in Indian rupee terms at the time of publication. Gold in the domestic market has been trading at a slight discount to its international counterpart for since mid-August, reflecting a balanced demand supply dynamic. Following the sharp import duty cut in July, the flow of smuggled gold into the country has almost ceased, making way for official imports. Despite record high prices, consumer buying during Diwali was strong in both gold jewelry and bars and coins. Markets and media reported higher footfall at jewelry stores and robust buying of coins via online as well as offline platforms. Promotional events and marketing campaigns undertaken by jewelers to lift sales. Indian gold ETFs continued to attract strong inflows in October, fueled by a favorable gold price momentum and increased volatility in domestic stock markets. The long-term capital gains treatment for gold, which was announced in July, has provided a continued boost as reflected in the significant rise in inflows since that time. Now we'll show you more clips, but first check out our exclusive Black Friday VPN deal. VPNs are an essential way to keep your data private and secure. And with this massive discount, it'll cost just a few bucks. It's a no-brainer. Plus, you'll get three extra months free and a 30-day money-back guarantee. Check the link in the pinned comment. Don't miss it. Alternative. I think that this administration will be much better for the country, but it will ultimately be very good for gold too. I, look, when Trump won in 2016, gold sold off hard for a few weeks until mid-December. But following that, <clears throat> there was a huge gold rally through much of 2017. Um, you have a situation where there's been massive short positions by the commercial banks across the board in gold and silver that have been literally bleeding them dry for the better part of the last year. And this was an opportunity on on the um, Trump euphoria to push the the price down a little bit to get the algorithms to start selling, which then triggered a a pretty large sell off. And what you're seeing is the managed money that was very long has sold a large portion of that position, which means the commercial banks go the opposite direction. Not only are they covering their shorts, they're taking the longs. On the other end, this is to be expected. Um, I was wondering how these banks would ever get out of these short positions, and I think this is an opportunity for them to do that. Um, but in terms of you know where this is ultimately going, um, I I think nothing has has changed at all. In fact, look, um, Trump is a proponent of of, of 
very low interest rates. I mean, he'd like negative interest rates if he could. During his last tenure, he was calling the 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 Fed boneheads for not implementing zero or, or even negative interest rates. And so when you talk about a situation of lower interest rates in a weaker dollar, that, that's bad for the purchasing power of the currency. Certainly that's good for the banks, that's good for Wall Street, but it's also very, very, very inflationary. What happens is that lately as the front end of the market, or the, the bond market, the yield, the, the, the rates have been pushed down. The back end's going up commensurate, if not more. In fact, they've lowered the front end by 75 basis points, and the back end is up over 80 basis points over that same period of time. In other words, a 10-year treasury, which is the most important treasury. It's the one that is is tied to the mortgages. It's tied to the credit cards, to the to the auto loans. It's tied to to leases, um, commercial uh, um, commercial leases in terms of real estate. So yeah, I think that this was to be expected, um, and it shouldn't shock people. And to see it move in the direction that it is going, when you see the stock market and cryptocurrencies taken off the way that they have, again, it, it's only exacerbating this correction, which is really something that the big commercial banks, I think, are welcoming. Now, at the same time, where this becomes kind of dicey is that you have half of the world looking at these depressed prices as an opportunity to to load up on gold and silver at subsidized prices, that being the central banks and the BRICS nations. So, yeah, this is this is a the market exha- exhaling and uh, you know irrational exuberance, if you will, because while this will be good for the country on many levels, um, it doesn't change the fact that even if you had a guy like Elon Musk come in and 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 trim all the fat, all of it. And we get into a much more streamlined situation with the government. The Congressional Budget Office, which is an, a, a nonpartisan group uh, out of Washington, maybe the last nonpartisan group, can, has come out and said that by 2031, in just four years, 100% of tax revenue goes just to pay the interest on the debt and the mandatory entitlements like Social Security and, and Medicare. And how do you retain your status as the supreme authority in the world, if you will, uh, in terms of militarily and and in terms of financially, when you're borrowing things like uh, military spending, which is discretional, everything that is discretional would need to be borrowed, everything other than the mandatory payments for maintaining the interest on the debt and the entitlements like Social Security and, and Medicare. So it's a situation that we've gotten so far down the rabbit hole. We are so indebted um, by reigniting the inflation engine, by dropping rates, um, again, we're not learning from our mistakes and we're just papering over the same problem. So I don't, look, I'm very optimistic, at least in terms of what it means for the country to go back to some form of sanity from a standpoint of culturally. Um, but in terms of financially, no, I, I think that gold and silver will ultimately, as that debt burden gets worse and worse and worse, and we see this debt bubble pop, which I think it will. I mean, you know, you look at at the bank in Lindsay, Oklahoma, which I think was a test case that failed. In today's news recap, higher supplies to the UK lift Swiss October gold exports. Gold exports from Switzerland rose in October compared to September due to higher supplies to Britain, but were down from a year ago as high gold prices kept deliveries to China and Hong Kong subdued. Swiss customs data showed on Tuesday. Supplies from Switzerland, the world's biggest bullion refining and transit hub, to Britain in October reached the highest level since June 2021, according to the data. London is the world's largest center for over-the-counter trading of gold. This year's 27% gold price rally, which took spot prices to a record high of $2,790.15 per troy ounce on October. 31 has been affecting physical demand in China, the world's top consumer of the metal. However, gold exports from Switzerland to India, the world's second largest gold consumer and a major importer, rose in October from September amid festival purchases. 
Before we jump back into the clips, check out our exclusive Black Friday VPN deal. A good VPN is essential for keeping your data private and secure. And with this deal, you're getting top tier protection for just a few bucks. It's fast, reliable, and a no brainer at this price. Plus, you'll get three extra months free and a 30 day money back guarantee. Check the link in the pinned comment. Don't miss out. And um, I mean, I'd stay out of the regional banks. I mean, a, a credit union is, is probably better than the large uh, commercial banks. They, they are not as risky as the big banks are, but they're not immune to, to all the problems either. So yeah, uh, leaving enough in the, in the bank to pay your monthly expenses and whatnot. Sure. But, uh, any other cash, I think you'd do a whole lot better riding the Trump, uh, wave, if you will, the Trump train, um, or being your own bank and, and removing counterparty risk that I just have a hard time believing won't rear its head probably very soon. My biggest fear of all of this is it's kind of like a psyop, like a setup, and they want to blow up the system and blame things like, you know, free market capitalism and um, and Trump, of course, and all of his policies for blowing everything up. And you know, I I don't think people understand just how screwed up the books really are, and the lying that we get out of the Bureau of Labor Statistics on unemployment and on inflation and and just how bad it truly is, um, most people have no idea. But if they, if you were, like, for example, the liquidity in the system, the BTFP, the Bank Term Funding Program, expired just a couple of days ago. The reverse repo market is down to almost zero. Um, the the um, velocity in money is very slow right now, and the liquidity is is bad. And so when you talk about banks in urgent need of liquidity, they have been able to draw upon the reverse overnight repo market. They have been able to go and use things like the um, the discount window or the BTFP. All of these things are down to the lowest levels. In, in Well, BTFP is gone. The um, the uh, overnight lending window is, is very, very low. And then horrible terms that they don't want to use them. So there's, there's, there's problems in the system. And as rates on the 10 year go higher, that's going to create massive problems as these commercial loans and leases come due this year and next, which then cripple the banks and can just like that, you know, set that daisy chain off in the banking system. So we're not out of the woods, but we should be optimistic. It is, I'm sick and tired of being, you know, Joey buzzkill. I, I am. I mean, it gets old, right? But I guess if, if, um, if the foo shits, wear it, right? So, you know what I'm saying? I just, I just think that it, it's, it's foolish to become concerned and um, panic stricken about what's happened right now. Uh, this is exactly what happened in 2016 and everything turned right back around and, and gold started to march much higher. So just st stay true to your beliefs and your convictions. We haven't seen anything that's going to change ultimately the fate of the dollar. Um, but there might be some profits on the table in, in the stock market and in the crypto market. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong with riding this wave for as long as you can. Just be careful. Uh, I, I agree, Andy. I think. What are your thoughts on Andy Schechtman's interview? Do you agree with his predictions? Do you think the BRICS nations could challenge the U.S. dollar and disrupt the American economy? Could gold really blow up in 2025? Drop your honest opinions in the comments and let the stacker community know if you're investing in miners or prefer sticking with physical metals. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out this video over here. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I'll see you on the other side.